So like we, we, we talked about earlier, uh, education is the, see for me, I will tell you, education is, is, the, is the joker to solve any problem, any, okay? So see, I've, I've heard about, uh, I've heard from young Africans, always talking about uh, education is broken. Yes, it's, it's broken, okay? Uh, it's, a, it's a worldwide pro problem, okay? So what do you think about our education, the way it is today? And uh, are we on the path that will take us to the destination we, we are seeking? If, if the question is, are we on the path? No, we are not on the path. This is unfortunate. <laughs> uh, yes, if that's the question, then it's like, uh, very easy. I have worked in education for a very long time, by the way. So okay. I started working in education from 2017. So I've worked in education and I have, while I'm doing my other things, I am a very multi potentialist person. So while I'm doing my other things, I'm still very engaged in other education things. Um, so, I mean, just recently, um, I was still working as a country manager for an education um, organization, all of that. So I am very constantly thinking about education. Yeah. Five things that I really want to, to change somewhere in Africa. And I think those are very big problems. We still need, we still need to fix our culture. We still need to fix our health, right? Especially mental health in our generation. I think mm. it's a very big problem. Yeah. We need to um, look at education, we need to look at technology. Um, so like those are things that I am very passionate about. Um, so education is very important. I think that the way we think about education is just wrong. That's the thing. I, one of my favorite things to watch is a dramatism that is a, 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 a TV series that the National Geographic did around three people. It's called Genius. So season one is Albert Einstein. Season two is Pablo Picasso. Season three is Arita Franklin. I've, 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 I've watched it. That series. Yeah. 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 So season one, Albert Einstein is one of my favorite TV series to watch. Mm. It's like something that I come back to watch all the time. Now, if you and I mean, the book tells a story, so, but the dramatism helps for a lot of who can read, right? So I'm yeah. just saying that if you can read, you can read the thing. And it's very intriguing, so you, you enjoy it, I hope. Yeah. But one of the things that you will find for a very long time is that the people who have become successful, they've always viewed education out of its conventionality. Because the conventional education, as good as it is, it's not for everyone. And that's something that I have come to conclusion. It's not for everyone. But what we need to do very well is to think, is to teach people how to think. No matter what, we need to teach people how to think. And I have been struggling with this for years. And I think that ultimately, one of the things that I think that I would do that would be most influential is to find, is to write a book or do something that can teach people a very simple way to build a thought process, a framework that can guide their life. Because I think that's one of the greatest gifts you can give to anybody. Because all the problems that we are in is just because we are people who outsource their thinking to other people. People who are not able to think for themselves. And that is what education really is. When you go to school, you are building the foundations of thought to the extent where you can become an independent thinker. So when we say problem solving, problem solving is not any complicated thing. Problem solving is there is a wall be behind you, be um, in front of you, and you need to overcome it. What do you do? your mind starts kicking in and the vast experiences that you have leads you to take the next action. And while experience is good, I think that the most powerful thing education can do, it gives you the tools. So how I think about it is this way, that knowledge, right? Education is processes, tools, and then the knowledge. So for example, someone, can go to medical school for six years. And then they teach them all the brilliance. They become a doctor, they are qualified. But the truth is that they can never teach you enough for all the complications that exist in the world. It's just not possible because it's just going to become this crazy, all of that. Now 
you need to use the framework of the tools that you have to now put those knowledge into the toolbox. If you put that knowledge into the toolbox and you start using your tools on it, you realize, okay, well, even though I know this is how it is done in this particular case, when we think, when you do this and you do this, I think there are more chance of success. success. And so we have a thinking toolbox that can help us in different scenarios because that's unfortunately, we, our education as it is, right? It would be perfect if our world was predictable. Okay. If we had, if we knew what was going to happen tomorrow, our education system is perfect. Like we don't even have to worry <laughs> because you are taught in school that, oh, one plus one is two. You are just expecting one plus one and it's going to be one plus one and you say it's two. Like it will be perfect. But the fortunate thing is that the life is so unpredictable that what we, what we are learning tomorrow, what we are learning today is going to turn out in some and such a different way that we are not expecting that. We need to have a thinking process that can use the tools that we, the knowledge that we have to go over it. And that's what is missing in education. I mean, I don't, I don't, I won't sit here and say that I am a better thinker or whatever, but when I see people, they struggle to make the very simplest decision in their lives. That's the problem. They struggle to make the very, very simple decisions in their life. And that affects their rate of success. That's what I see. Like if you are somebody who like me, likes to talk to people. I see people struggle with the very simplest of decisions because they don't have the tools to kind of put together all the things they are seeing and say, okay, this is what to do. They are overwhelmed. Most people are overwhelmed with the experiences that come at them, the information that come at them every day, and they lack a toolbox to group them, to analyze them, to synthesize them, and then to make a decision. And I think that is how our education should be focused. We should forget about all of these things. It is very important that we teach people to code. But I have seen so many people who have gone to school for four years and cannot do anything with their computer science degrees because the, the knowledge is there. But when they come out of school, they see that, wow, the problems in the world, they have changed and the knowledge can't fit anymore. But they can't think. They can't think. How do we revise our notes to meet that problems? That's what I'm saying. Our education system will be so great if the world was static and not evolving. But the world is constantly evolving. And the only way to be able to beat it is to think in, in accordance in that evolution. And that's something that we are missing in education. I don't have the answers to that problem yet. But to me, that is what it is. And we, education has not transformed in a very long time. We need to find a way to do that. We just need to find a way to do that. Um, I was telling you about how, for example, the mentors of, um, even in Abdelstein time, there are a lot of mentorship that does that. So for me, and I've seen that work, I don't know, I don't know the science behind mentorship, but I, it works. If you're around a certain group of people who think a certain way, it wraps off you. And it's difficult for me to understand the science behind it. But if one of us, if each of one of us, because I don't know the answers to it, if the rudimentary thing we can do is that each one of us who say they are doing better in the thinking department, in the education department, can just take some other person and just mentor them, I see that people, it just wraps off them. That is why, for example, I feel like it's beyond the school. It's more like a cultural thing. Because you know our people in Africa would spend all our lives. Now they are they coming, they are coming to the Yeah, they will be lazy and all of that. They suddenly come to Europe and their perspective has changed. Not because they went to university when they went there, but the environment does something, it does something to them. So we need to think about it like say, I'm not, I don't have the answers. But from my experience, if one person, each one of us is finding a way to surround ourselves with people who are not as good as us, it just eventually wraps up them. Wow. When you talk about uh, many people do not, are not able to make simple decisions. I don't know about 
Ghana, okay, so I, mm-hmm. I won't, uh, I won't uh, assume, mm-hmm. but with uh, at least two of the major tribes in Nigeria that I know, in our co- my culture, we are taught respect for elders is very, very important. Mm-hmm. And I agree it is. But I think we overdo it to the extent that you bring a problem beyond the knowledge of the elders, okay? And then you are waiting for the elders who do not know anything about that problem to guide you to solve it. Exactly, to validate you even in the first place. Okay, so what, what I see is that many young people have been taught to follow the direction of their parents or their uncles or their aunties. So when they they have a problem, they run to auntie, they run to uncle, they run to their parents. Even though the problem they have is a modern problem. The parents or uncles do not have information about it. And they can they can help you. Yes. That's one. Okay. Secondly, you mentioned that uh, we need to learn how to think. That's <laughs> see, that's why I have this think big for Africa. Yeah. See, ability to think the ability to think, it's fundamental for, to success of any, any kind. Exactly, exactly. Now, you may take the wrong de- de- decision six out of 10, but as long as you have the ability to think, when you find out that you have made a mistake, you have the ability to rethink and correct it. You know, (laughs) the reason why I'm keeping nodding my head is that just a few days ago, I was giving that similar analogy that the best coaches in the world are the ones that are able to make in-game substitutions and changes while the match is going on. So we always like to say that, learn from your failures. And I'm like, mm, if you have to wait to fail every time and learn from it, it might be too late for you. You need to be able to learn through the failures, not from them after they've happened. That's one of the things that is very important, like you said, to be able to be that kind of coach, right? Like because you're coaching your life, so you understand that you are making the substitutions in real time because you are seeing the chaos happening but you know that these are the things. That's what people cannot do. People cannot make adjustments, right? Within the time and they get suffocated in it and they drown and and, and that's it. Because failure is going to come. That that one is like failure is a constant. It's one of the most constant things in life. It's one of the most constant things. You are going to face it. But if you have the tools to be able to make adjustments, you always go through it. And that is it. Uh, and, 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 and that comes even beyond thinking some of them, like resilience, for example, it's a very important skill in life because when the difficulties come and they would come, how do you hold on tight so that you can pass through the storm and have that resilience? But at the core, it's taught because even when you are resilient, it's all about your next step. You can be resilient enough to endure, but if you don't know your next step to take, your resilience will not be able to amount to much. So I really agree with that sentiment. Just like that. It's about the coach who makes in-game substitutions and able to see what the other team is doing and make changes that would affect the game. Because if you always have to wait till the game has ended, you've lost your three points and that's it. Yeah. See, uh, 
when it comes to education, uh, yes, we need we need to make a lot of uh, adjustments in our education educational in, in, in institutions uh, from the from the from the primary school secondary school we need to make a lot of uh, adjustments uh, but see when it comes to thinking uh, I think uh, one of the things I learned uh, from my father uh, uh, he he was um he, he's a well he was because he doesn't practice actually he used to teach history and uh, he loved uh, philosophy so uh as a as a, a teenager a young teenager we used to do this uh what's it called socrates parlor game i don't so, yeah i just so yeah i think so Socrates Palo game. You see, it's it's logic, you know. When he ask a question and then I, you I, you answer with with logic, you know all, all that. See, logic and science are the best tools. Uh, they they use the well. Logic will teach you how to think okay and argue your point and uh, that's what science uses okay that methodical methodical exactly. process exactly see exactly. these are the things but you you know that do you know that do you know that i'm sorry to cut you do you know that the average university student in africa has not come to this conclusion well, the one that you're well, talking to now. I, that, I, I, I learned it, I learned it at home as a, as a 13-year-old boy from my exactly. father. Yes, and exactly. You see the point I was making about the mentorship. That is why we need to take people be on, under our wings and just teach them, right? And just teach them because this argument that you are making, it's a very simple thing that science didn't come out of the tin air. No, science is not any really complicated thing. Science is just a method. People like I feel like people don't get that. People don't get that science is a method. It's a method of thinking, basically. And the method says that to be able to think around these sets of problems, you need to start from point one, go to point two, point three. That is it. It's not a big deal. So how do we build internal thought processes? So for most people, it comes down to when, I, when, when there's a problem, what do you do? What is your step one? What is your step two, step three? Obviously, it's in your life. You wouldn't go back and say, right, step one. But it has to be internalized so that when it happens, your system is kicking in and it's working because that's it. The, uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, when you tell people to read philosophy, for, for example, uh, a lot of a lot of our people have uh, negative uh, influence from philosophy. Okay, uh, they think uh, anything philosophy is against their religious belief. Uh, I, it's unfortunate. Uh, see, our, our people do not even want to try out things or even understand what the it is before a lot of the a lot of us will push it aside, and mm -hmm. that's 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 another another topic. I, I don't want to, us to go through because uh, it's a big one. Okay, yeah. it's a big one, but it's it's a, it's it's a big issue holding our people back from learning the things they need to learn. I don't know uh, how how we get around it. Is uh, it's one of one of our big big issues we we need to face, you know.